The thing I find fascinating about the Gettys, when you, you know this is true, when you start talking about church music and worship, it tends to almost instantly divide. And here, what, what Keith and the Getty music, Keith and Christian and Getty music is able to do is they say music and it brings people together. And this conference is, is really a wonderful testament to the variety of folks who are brought together with this common cause of returning this wonderful gift of congregational singing you know, back to the church. And uh, I love what Keith is about here, love being a part of this, and uh, just grateful to be here. I have to think of this phrase. I'm sure you've probably never heard the phrase worship wars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's usually what happens. But there's a seems like there's a, a good peace here. And uh, in this peacetime, we can really make some advances. Well, and let's talk about that, because that's an incredible point you just made, that that music so often becomes such a divisive factor in the church. And here the Gettys are bringing thousands of people together and there is unity, there's a commonality of spirit. So there obviously is something that, that God has inspired to bring people together. What What is that as you see it? I think it's a testament on their part to put our focus on where it needs to be. When we're talking about music, we're talking fundamentally about the worship of God which fundamentally we're talking about theology. We're also Bible-centered in our worship. So we go back to last year's conference, it was on the Psalms. This is the, the hymnal of the Old Testament, the Psalms, and the rich expressions, the, the whole spectrum of emotions and experience are there in the Psalms. Elation and depression, victory and defeat, it's all there put right before the, the children of God as they express themselves before a holy God. So to focus last year on Psalms and this year to focus on the life of Christ. So I think they're, they're asking the right questions when it comes to music. It's not about style. It's not about preference. It's about theology, and it's about recognizing. You know, you, you peel back the heavens in Revelation, and there's the eternal worship chorus worshiping God and his purity and holiness on the throne and the Lamb. And that's what church music is about. It's, it's in miniature, this joining of this eternal chorus that we'll all someday be a part of perfectly, right? Not just perfect pitch, but perfect hearts tuned perfectly to this pure, holy, righteous God who is our God. And so I think what the Gettys are doing here is really valuable for the church to just force us to think theologically and ask those good theological questions. And as a way, you know, we talk about theology dividing. Sometimes theology unites because we're, we have a common confession. That's what I see here. Stephen Nichols is joining us today. We are at the Getty Music Worship Conference Sing 2019 at the Gaylord Opryland Resort and Convention Center in Nashville. And you are involved in this conference. Again, as you mentioned, the theme is the life of Jesus. So tell me, one of the questions I find myself asking is, what's, what's your role? What's your story as far as your participation here? Yeah, so I'm doing a topic called Confessing Christ, Theology to Doxology. And one of the things we find, you go back to the pages of the New Testament, and we find this in Philippians 2. Many New Testament scholars think that Philippians 2 is a hymn that Paul's quoting. We have Paul in 1 Timothy 3.16 who says, Great is our common confession. And then he goes on to list these things that Christ has done. And so right there in the pages of the New Testament, we see how theology leads to doxology. How creed writing is right there in the pages of the New Testament. We go to Revelation 4. We mention this. What do we find? The worship of a holy God. But this causes John to weep because there's a barrier, right, between us and God. So then we get Revelation chapter 5. And when we get into Revelation chapter 5, now we find the Lamb. And so because of who Christ is, and because of what he's done, we can worship God in purity. And so in my talk, I just want to remind us that confessing the person and work of Christ has been a crucial part of the church's worship from the pages of the New Testament and right on through the centuries, and that we need to get back to that as well and see that in our churches and in our worship. 